Hi, I'm Kevin Avery, and in this video for educators class, we'll be looking at storyboarding. We've provided you with this template for doing your storyboarding. It's a pretty standard storyboarding sheet. It's got a place to draw your shots and a place to describe what's going on, shot types and shot numbers to keep track of things. The one thing that this has that's slightly different is that it's got the rule of thirds built into it. So it's got these guide frames on the frame for you to draw on to help you compose your shots. The things we'll be focusing on while we're doing our storyboarding is the rule of thirds, the 180 degree line rule, which is used to maintain screen direction. We'll also be focusing on using what's called the 30 degree rule, which is when between shots, you make sure that the camera is moving at least 30 degrees, which is about one big step to ensure that you don't have the appearance of jump cuts in your footage. All right, so I'm gonna be doing money in Photoshop Remember when you're doing a storyboard, it doesn't have to be super detailed. One thing that I would recommend doing is definitely draw backgrounds, even poorly, um, and draw some representation of space. So don't draw stick figures, but you'll see from mine, I just draw fat bodies so I can get an idea of where they sit in the space. All right, so as I said, I'm just doing mine in Photoshop. I've got my brush that I'm drawing my backgrounds with and then I'm switching colors to draw my foreground or main character. So this is me walking to the lifts. Pretty simple. We've got a wide shot. We've got an arrow demonstrating that I come into the shot and then I've detailed what's going on so that even if I can't make out my terrible drawing, I should be able to figure it out. I like to start with a wide shot to establish what's going on um, and then we can move into a range of different shots. Switching between wide shots and close-ups gets a really nice flow to your piece. Okay, so moving on to our next shot, you'll see that we've switched 30 degrees. So we're now looking directly at the lifts. So we've switched that 30 degrees to change and make sure that we don't have the appearance of jump cuts. If you just shoot from where you are and zoom in to the next bit, it's gonna look like a jump cut. It's gonna look a little bit odd and jarring for the audience. So it is a good idea to switch as you go. All right, so the next shot is just the same as the first shot. And when I film this, I will film all of those in one go instead of filming and moving and filming and moving. Um, if you don't have to draw it again, don't draw it again. So if it's framed the same and the person is in pretty much the same position, you can get away with just writing in a different description of what's going on, then do that. Your story was supposed to be a guide rather than um, a work of art. All right, so, so you'll see that we've moved 30 degrees in the other direction now, and we're going in for a close-up. We've moved to kind of like a straight on 90 degrees to the, to the main character. And you'll see that the pictures don't have to be amazing. Just good enough that you can tell what's going on and you understand how it's being framed. All right, so onto our fifth shot. And in this one, you'll see that I've used, I've used the rule of thirds to compose this shot. So I'm standing basically in the center, but a little bit towards the left-hand side because my character is looking towards the right. So it gives me a little bit of that screen direction that we were working on. As well as because we've not moved to the other side of my character, we've always kept it on the right-hand side. We've maintained that 180 degree line rule. My character is always looking right towards the lifts. If we switch to the other side, he would be looking left towards the lifts. And again, just a repeat shot. So same as one is fine. So I would recommend doing this sort of stuff in Photoshop. It is really easy to erase stuff. It's really easy to have those separate colors for background and foreground, and you don't get the mix of colors. This is how I'd recommend doing it with students these days if they've got a style that they can use for it. It makes it nice and easy to put things together as well. So this is one of the final shots that's gone to the Wes Anderson style centered shot to see the lift opening to reveal the joke that I've missed the lift because I'm not concentrating. And then we return to that final shot as I exit the scene. So again, storyboards don't have to be super complicated. They don't have to be works of art. They have to be working documents that you can use to help you understand what you plan to shoot. It's a way to visualize what's going on and keep track of how things are progressing and make sure you can tick off things as you go. Think of it like a visual checklist of shots you need to get. Okay, and so when I go to record this, I'm gonna shoot shot one 
as one long take. Then I'll probably shoot shot four and five because they're on the same size. And then two and seven at once. That makes it really easy for me to shoot. It means that I can get things done really economically and it's not a lot of work for me, not a lot of setup. Only three setups to film an entire scene. All right, good luck. Hi everyone, thanks for watching. Click the link in the description below to explore more free online professional development on the Adobe Education Exchange. And click the link on screen to subscribe to the channel for more videos.